for the past few years, Tesla energy products, Tesla power walls, power packs, and more recently, solar roof tiles, have formed part of Tesla's wider grand plan, helping the world to move away from fossil fuels and onto cleaner, greener sources of electricity. Aside from becoming a one-stop shop for all your energy and transportation needs, something which simplifies the process for customers and helps Tesla break into multiple different markets, Tesla's energy portfolio gives it a way of branching into some pretty lucrative markets. markets for example, like the wholesale energy business, building and installing massive grid-type battery storage systems for utility and corporate clients around the world to help them smooth out the power demands on the grid, lowering operating costs, and avoiding peak energy charges. Take the massive grid-tied energy storage system Tesla won a contract to provide to South Australia earlier this year. 129 megawatt hours in capacity and capable of providing 100 megawatts of instantaneous power, Tesla CEO Elon Musk said that if the system wasn't supplied 100 days from the completion of the contractual paperwork, the state would receive the system for free. I've no idea what the cost of the system is, but when it's completed, it's expected to be the world's largest grid-tied lithium-ion energy storage system, and it will be capable of providing instantaneous power to 30,000 homes. And of course, if Tesla succeeds in its plans, installation is expected to be completed by the end of December, it will be a major advertising coup for the company. But although Tesla's name will most certainly be associated with the project, Tesla's engineers will be responsible for designing the system, and the power packs themselves will be assembled by Tesla employees, it won't be Tesla battery cells made at Tesla's Gigafactory inside the power packs. It will be Samsung cells instead. Confirmed during an investor call surrounding the announcement that Tesla was issuing $1.5 billion worth of senior notes, I covered this in a video earlier this week, Tesla CEO Elon Musk confirmed that Samsung SDI cells had been chosen for the South Australia power pack. Why? Well, there are several reasons, and I think it's important to spend some time going over them. Simply put, it's to do with the sheer volume of lithium-ion cells needed. As Tesla has stated in recent filings, it's been working full steam ahead on producing as many 2170 lithium-ion cells as it possibly can with its battery partner Panasonic at the Gigafactory outside of Reno, Nevada. The high volume production of those cells, which Tesla will use in its Model 3 electric car, are essential if Tesla is to meet its promised production targets for Model 3 and also hit profitability down the road. But while Tesla, or rather Panasonic, is now producing lithium-ion cells at the Gigafactory, Tesla needs more cells than it's currently producing. Right now, Tesla is shipping the 18650 cells it uses in its Tesla Model S and Model X battery packs all the way from Panasonic's Japanese production facilities and has been pretty open and honest about its need for consistent high volumes of battery cell supplies in order to keep up with production demand. And while Tesla has secured a consistent supply from Panasonic for use in its Model S and Model X cars and it's making its Model 3 battery cells in-house, it still needs more. Which is why last year, Tesla shipped a large number of Samsung SDI cells from South Korea to the US in order to test their suitability for Tesla energy products. Samsung, which has an established relationship with Tesla and has provided it with battery cells in the past, might be one of Panasonic's rivals in the energy space. But alongside Panasonic, it's one of the few companies that Tesla actually trusts to make cells for it. Of course, eventually, Tesla hopes to produce the majority of its battery cells in-house, but with a clock ticking on this 100-day deal that Musk inked, Tesla needs to get those 129 megawatt hours of power packs built, shipped, and installed in double-quick time. If it reaches the deadline, Samsung wins, Tesla wins, and I'm sure more energy products similar in size and scale to the South Australia project will be ordered by governments and utilities around the world from Tesla. Since Tesla can't afford to fail, Samsung is the smart choice for cells, especially given this project is larger in storage capacity than the total number of power packs produced by Tesla in the last quarter. At the moment, it's tough to say if Tesla will reach its deadline, but with more gigafactories in the pipeline around the world and demand for lithium-ion battery cells rising, Tesla's tactic of buying cells in might work this time, but may not in the future. After all, when something becomes more in demand, the wholesale price of it rises, which again, 
is why Tesla is building its gigafactories in the first place. That's it. As always, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe, hit that notification bell and click the Patreon link at the end of this video if you want to help me make more of these videos. Until next time, keep evolving!